And of course, that's the exact second that the audio kicked on from the feed that I'm trying to listen to. Anyway, listen, when it comes to lawyers, we always talk about having our ideal client. And the reality is there are so many lawyers that kind of get stuck in this concept of if I have an ideal client, I'm going to drive a bunch of people away. And that's not going to be the case. But there are some firm owners or lawyers or people, whatever you want to call it, that do a really great job having two different ideal audiences. And that's what I want to talk to Sonia about today. Sonia has an audience of clients for trademark stuff and an audience of lawyers who she teaches how to do trademark stuff. And the balance that she has on those two things gives her multiple income streams in a way that makes a ton of sense. So that's what we're talking about today. I assume that pretty much all of you know her because she's attorney famous. Um, <laughs> but for those of you that don't, so, so oh my God, I'm going to mess up your last name again. I'm sorry. Lakani. Okay. Lakani. Thank you. All right. Sorry. Yeah, I don't, it. It's so much pressure. Sorry. Uh, no, not at all. We're all friends. It's all cool. No big deal. That's true. Um, is the founder of Lakani Law. Focuses her practice on counseling business owners on how to protect their catchy business names, logos, and taglines through trademark registration. In addition to her law practice, she teaches courses to other lawyers on practicing trademark law, on marketing, on working smarter, not harder. Over the course of her career, she's helped numerous startups and small to medium-sized businesses secure trademark protections for their brands. She's considered a national expert in her field, as her work has been recognized and featured by numerous media outlets such as Bloomberg, Entrepreneur Magazine, Glamour Magazine, Business News Daily, CBS, etc. You can reach her via her website, L-A-K-H-A-N-Y-L-A-W.com, or on Instagram via, and I love it, Trademark Lady. Tra sorry, Trademark, trademark lawyer, lawyer Lady. lady. <laughs> My apologies. Um, I think that's awesome. So thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Sorry, you guys, I have the sniffles. I just came back from a conference that apparently was a super spreader event. So we're hoping oh my it's God. not COVID. But yeah. <laughs> well, it's all the, the benefit of being virtual. So we we're going to dive, yeah. uh, we're going to have deep into our topic today. So different strokes, how to market to different audiences of, in this case, lawyers and non-lawyers. But before that, I want to talk about our last episode briefly. Last week, we had Carl Fix on. Carl talked to us about Mind Over Matter, the secret tips to a happy lawyer. So for any of you interested in a little kick in the butt to get that workout plan back in or some other ways to prioritize your happiness as an attorney, that's the episode you want to check out. But while we've got Sonia here, I don't want to miss out on this because I'm interested to learn a ton from you in this hour, <laughs> let alone everybody else. So give me like, what's your story? I know we have the bio, but like, where did you start this journey to get you to where you are today? I mean, how far back do we want to? <laughs> there so it there was a white room, with... a doctor. I don't know. No, no. I mean, um, so the short version is that um, my mom forced me to go to law school. Uh, we actually just joked about it last night at Mother's Day dinner. Um, she had this dream of like, you know, I grew up during the, well, I'm going to age myself. It's fine. I grew up during the OJ Simpson like trial era. So like she had grand visions of me being like, you know, in a jury and like murder, you know, all this stuff. And then obviously I don't do any of that. But when I was in law school, I hated everything. Like I never went to school, ditched everything. Like it was just, I was a C law student. I just, it couldn't have been more clear that I didn't want to be there. And Wait, then- hold, hold on, I gotta jump in on something. Did she like, did she want you to be like Johnny Cochran, Robert Shapiro, like- Or like Marsha she, Clark. I wanted, Marcia yeah, Clark? I'm like, but she didn't okay. win. I'm like, wait, but she didn't win. But you know what I mean? Like she was still a role model and you know, she was an icon for young female lawyers everywhere, you know? So, and she still is. So. Uh, I think she just had grand visions of me, like with my briefcase and suit going into a courtroom and like, you know, doing stuff in front of judges and juries. Uh, and so that was definitely not going to happen because like I don't have at all a litigious adversarial personality, nor like, nor do I have the potential of developing it. Like, it's just, it was very clear. Uh, conflict has always given me like anxiety. So I, just, I was like, that's not perfect happen. person for law school. Like, yeah. Like, oh, man. I was like, why am I here? I was like, I hate every minute of this. Um, and you know what? I took a trademark class out of nowhere to fill a gap, uh, because I wanted four day weekends. You know how you we used to do that, like structure our schedules and lo and behold, it was the one class that I started to like really enjoy. And I showed up early, sat in the front, asked questions, wasn't on like Instagram or not. We didn't have Instagram back then. It was, I wasn't on G chat or like messing around or shopping online. Like I was paying attention and it was one of the only classes I got an A plus on the final. I loved it. Cause I was like, Oh, I can understand this. Like it makes sense to me in the real world because it's business. And one thing I've always been is very business minded. Like I've always had a talent for that. And I grew up around entrepreneurs. I come from a long line of 
people doing their own things and cousins, friends, family, you know, my brothers. So it made sense to me. And then I was like, all right, well, if I have to do this lawyer thing, I'm only doing trademarks. That's it. Like final if I have to. And unfortunately it was 2008 when all this was and nine and 10 when like the great, are we calling it the great recession? The great recession kicked yeah. in. And so like, and trademarks is an, you know, um, and at least to find an associate job is an economic a, economy dependent thing. Like you have to be in a decent economy to find like a big law, like, you know, but back then, like there was no question of like, should I start my own practice or like a smaller firm, whatever, like, it's just, that just wasn't really a thing. And I was like, and how am I going to learn this stuff? Which all comes in later. That's why I mentioned it. Like, how am I going to even learn how to practice this? Like, who's going to teach me, right? I needed to get a job. You need experience, but you can't get experience without a job. So it's like, you know, it got kind of tricky. So uh, that story sort of like laid the groundwork for all the things that I went on to do later. Yeah. I love, um, it reminds me of, there's one of those things that has its rounds where it's like, I don't remember the name of the program, but it's like, oh, you need five years of experience in whatever program for this position. And this guy writes a thing. He's like, you know, it stinks. I only have three and a half years of this of experience with this program because I'm the one who invented it. And I was like, that's so funny. <laughs> that's that amazing. <laughs> yeah, but I, I wish I remembered the program. But anyway, but yeah, yeah it, it goes right back into that point. Yeah, it's a, it's a catch. It's really tough for new attorneys to get out of that loop. I mean, now I think it's a lot easier because, you know, people will default to starting their own practices or people are much more amenable to co-counseling and walking you through. But, you know, 12 years ago when I first graduated, like, I don't feel like that was a thing. It was associate or bust. Like that's, and, and that's just how it felt, you know, and it was a really frustrating time because I felt like even when I did get a couple of trademark associate interviews, you know, and like get my foot through the door, because I had all the coursework and the internships and I'd written like anything that you could think of that I could do during law school. My, my resume was like throwing up the word trademark. Right. And so but eventually really they get, wanted you to illegally practice law as a law student. So you could have the experience, right? Yeah. And I'm like, how am I supposed to have experience? And, um, even when I would get an interview, like I remember distinctly, I got one in-house interview, which was like at the time, my dream job for this like in-house, um, fashion label, like a fashion labels in-house counsel. And it was in the bag. Like I had a connection. Everything was cool. Like interview wise, everything was great. And he's like, I have to give you a trademark quiz. I was like, what? And it was literally, I mean, now I could do it one handed, left handed in my sleep. You know, I obviously teach this stuff, but back then it was like, what kind of, it was like basic trademark stuff that, and I was like bewildered and I totally bombed it probably half out of nervousness, half out of just not knowing the vocabulary. And I'm like, dang, if I had just done that one sheet correctly, like that one pager, I'd have, you know, a whole new, tra a different trajectory. And so yeah, but it was you wouldn't be like, doing what you're doing now. Right. Like it was, so it like was it all worked out. I mean, it all truly worked out. Like the best job I've ever had is the one I've created, the ones I've created like for myself. But I guess like I, I go through all these sort of moments to, to show kind of how I became so passionate about not only just mentoring, but teaching. And I'm not a coach. I, I very famously say that I am an attorney and instructor. I'm a teacher and I instruct, I tell you what to do. It's not like, how are you feeling? What's up? Like, it's like, this is what you need to do this, this, and this, and it will work, you know? And so that's why I became so passionate about at least arming people with like the basics to speak intelligently in an interview. Or if you want to start doing it, like you won't muck it up. Like you can get by, you know? So so how did you end up being able to have the opportunity to learn the stuff that you need experience to learn to get the opportunity to learn what you don't know? Yeah, I like the, <laughs> the loop. I mean, it was so much trial and error, so many mistakes. Um, the first couple of jobs I had were not trademark related. I was an associate at various small firms. I would never, still to this day, have never worked in big law. I was always a C law student, never made journal. And I really try to emphasize that because for everything that like I was like, I shouldn't have, it shouldn't have turned out this way for me, but I like to, sh to share that because what I did have is all the other stuff, like the business acumen, the interest in getting better at it, learning, investing in myself, investing in my own education. Um, and, and the business side of things, I thought of all of this as a business, which is why I think it worked out, you know, and, um, the way that I made the connection from sort of practice. So the practice, 
you know, one day I just woke up and resigned. There, there's no glamour there. Like it's, I don't know if that's a very advisable route, but it worked out for me. <laughs> I just woke up one day, I had nothing to lose. I was single, no kids, no pets, no nothing. I was like, what do I have to lose? I'll end up on a friend's couch, you know, who cares? And obviously it didn't end up that way. But um, yeah, I started to practice five years after being an associate and none of the positions I had were up until later on were um, trademark related. So I would go and bring trademark work into the firms that I was at. And they're like, we're a, like the first one was like, we're like, we're a PI shop. Like, what do you like? What? And I'm like, yeah, but this is the area I really want to do. He's like, yeah, I know. But like, okay, well, you're, you're on your own. Like, I'm not getting any part of this. Like, just don't bother me with this. And so I literally started going out and teaching free seminars and networking. And I would introduce myself as a trademark lawyer. Like, I'm like, this is what I do. This is what I'm interested in. And I did a ton of free trademarks, tons. And I teamed up with um, a couple of like friends, mentors. I remember sitting in a couple of their offices late after hours and they were showing me around the USPTO and like where everything was. I filed dummy trademarks. Like I was really- or, What's a dummy trademark? Like just like I would like make up stuff to keep going through the screens and not hit file. Oh, yeah, gotcha, gotcha, like gotcha. Mock, I mock sort of like taught myself after hours on weekends. So the, and then the more I learned, the more I could speak about it, which then turned into a couple of paying clients. And then, you know, my bosses were like, oh, you're onto something. And then eventually I found a trademark associate job. Then I found another one, an even better one. And then by then I was like, oh, wait, I just hate working for people. This sucks. <laughs> so, so there we go. Yeah. So I got to jump in along. The, it's funny along those lines. Um, so when I started out as a state attorney, I thought I wanted to be in criminal law my entire life. I had the reverse of you, though. I hated my criminal law class. I did poorly in it, but like, that's what I did um, anyway. But I, they ended up sending us for initial appearances to the jail. So if you're arrested in Florida, you'd have to see a judge within 24 hours, unless it's a holiday. And even then most counties will still do it. So there were two of us doing it. One of them had been doing it. The other girl had been, the other girl, the other lady had been doing it for like 10 years, just at the jail. I had been there for like three months. They get rid of these positions and make it a rotation. They put me in charge of the training for everybody else. And I was like, why not the person who's an expert? And they're like, because look, everybody else is jumping in for a week. So anything that was important to you in three months, they can learn in a day. Everything that she knows that she can write the book on it, they're not going to be able to pick up in oh my you know, God. next week you go to the jail for a week. Yeah. Uh, so it was just, it was funny how sometimes those presentations are easier the less you know, because you really don't get stuck in the weeds. But I love how you're like building that presentation as you're going through doing it. It's great. I think, you know, a lot of people use hyperbole in our conversation these days. Like this is the best meal I've ever had. The best is I'm obsessed with it. I think it is very safe to say I was quite literally obsessed with becoming an expert in trademark law. Absolutely obsessed. It's like that plan. is a literal statement. Yeah. Yeah. It's what helped yeah. you burn the brightest. And I, and I like, look, I know that my view on doing the law, the practicing law is a lot different than my view on running a firm. So it's very similar totally. to what talking about. If you find that specific niche, in the niche, in the niche, in the industry, that really becomes what you love. Totally. And that's really what it was. And throughout all of it, the backdrop has always been business. And so now that I look back, I mean, I'm still in my career, so it's not even like hindsight, you know, I'm just in a different stage at each point at each time. But when I look back, even just how far I've come, I realized like, you know, people are like, Oh, you know, you were born to do this. You were born to be a trademark lawyer. No, I wasn't. I was born to be good in business. Like that's, I can safely say that I could be selling butterflies and probably would have done the same. You know, you would have seen me doing this and that on the internet and, you know, branded it and whatever. Like it, it, it's just about my love for business that birthed one business that birthed another one. And it, it's what I love about my life. It's not, I, and this might not be like the, you know, um, uh, most like, you know, favorable thing to say, but like, I don't think I was born to be a trademark lawyer. I was born to be successful in business. This is just the route I chose. And I think that I feel safe saying if I chose something else in a week, I would, it would take some time, obviously the same grind and ramp up period, but I would be, I would do this. Cause I think like business just excites me. I just love, love business and I love entrepreneurship. So that's kind of, I mean, it ties and marries the ideas of like multiple businesses, you know? So next year for April Fool's Day, I want you to change your Instagram handle to Butterfly Lawyer Lady. Just, I just love for the day. It. <laughs> like coming out. I might just do it. I but but you know what? By next year, I might have a whole nother, you know, I might have another business under my arm. I don't know. Like, yeah. We'll see. Well, yeah, we'll and, see. And that's to me, like I always find that to be the beauty of being a lawyer. Like, yes, you have the law that you do, but there's the industry you have to know in theory inside and out. Like 
Yeah. My my wife, my so I guess let me phrase it this way. My so my mother in law is an emergency room nurse. She and my wife can have like really insane in depth conversations about injuries because my wife is PI. So like they'll sit there and be like, oh, it's a herniated this and it's a fracture this and there's a spiral contusion here. And I'm like, I, I don't know what you're talking about, but cool. Like I appreciate that you all are in that thing. And so from the trademark side, from the business side, like you end up with that same thing in business. Um, that it gives you these tools for success in not just the law side, but the like slightly outside the law wheelhouse. Yeah. And I think it's about also paying attention and following your gifts. Like I think, you know, one of the, the shames I think, and or the bummers about, you know, us having gone through law school and becoming lawyers, I think we feel sort of like limited in that. And it's like, well, where's my gift in that? Your gift might not be in anything that revolves with lawyering. Like, I feel like my gift is, you know, like I said, it's not necessarily that, but you can parlay that into other things. And, you know, that's kind of how the teaching was born because, you know, I don't know if that's like a good segue, but it, you know, it was <laughs> literally that my next question I was going to ask, yeah, how did you like, branch off into these other things? So, so great, great well, minds think alike. Yeah. 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 So, and I know that's what people always want to know and they're always interested in it. And I think it's kind of cool too, because you know, you can be a one trick pony, but to do a two trick three, that's kind of cool now, you know, to be able to say like, this is how I did all these. And now it's like a game of Tetris where I've done these different building blocks. Like one thing can lead to another. So the way it started was, so I became somewhat of a mini success story locally in Atlanta because of my like not traditional route, right? It was like, you, you were like a famous failure. Like no one thought you were gonna become anything in life. Like, you know what I mean? And I'm like, oh no, no. C's get degrees there. and then they yeah, make successful oh, no, no. businesses. Yeah, I went to Emory and it was a top 20 school at the time. I don't know where they are now, who cares? But you know, I mean, I, I became somewhat of like a, wow, like almost like a, wow, there's another way to do it. You don't have to go to big law. You don't have to have get good grades. Like there's another way to, lots of path to success, right? Like the different ways. And so I started, being invited to a lot of like career panels and like guest stuff, you know, and so the very same panels that I used to attend as a law student at Emory or like where or Georgia State or wherever, um, I was now being asked to be a speaker and share my story. And so I would just get up there and talk, I mean, tell my story where I was. I'm like, yeah, I just woke up and resigned. And, you know, I started pounding pavement and this is how I built this firm and I did this. And um, from then I got asked did, to start. Wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Did, did career services be like, don't take that advice. Like, please stick. <laughs> I, I can just imagine this panel where it's like, Hey, here's yeah. so-and-so from the prestigious firm of blah, blah, blah. And they're miserable. Here's so-and-so from the prestigious firm of blah, blah, blah. And they're miserable. Here's yeah. Sonia and she's happy because she launched her own firm and never did big law. Like, I just, yeah, oh. you know what? It, it's actually funny. We're skipping ahead, but I'll, I'll come back to it. But th at, at one point, um, I started getting a lot of speaking engagements from big law firms to come in and train their trademark lawyers oh, than their okay. associates because they're like it's not a good use of our time can you just come in for like a two day or we'll fly you down but I, mean, I did a whole a ton of those and I, I was joking with my mentor the other day she's like aren't you gonna like what happened to those like, I feel like that was like a good route for you and it was a lot of fun but I have to tweak I have to come back and like you know calib recalibrate a little bit because if even if I'm not talking about starting a firm it just bleeds out because they're like man I want her life she seems so happy and I'm like so they're like, you're really tan. I'm like, sorry, I just flown this in the Dominican. I have a little sniffle because, you know, I was just trying. They're like, what is your life? Like, and so, you know, I was like, oh my God, I have to shut up because all these like associates are going to realize that there's another way. Like, you know, in the Lion King where he's like, Simba, we don't go there. Like, that's kind of how it is sometimes when you're on the inside of working for a different, like, per you know, when you're on the inside of working for a firm or a company. So, except in that case, I think it's you have to stay in the shadows. Whereas in the Lion King, it's you have the entire, all the yeah, light. Fan of, yeah, so um, I, career services was actually um, pretty supportive because I think, you know, again, we're talking uh, law students and graduates that are coming out of it, classes 8, 9, 10, 11. It's just like a miserable job market. So I think to be able to share that it can, there's other ways to go about things. I think they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, please like talk a little more about that because so that we don't end up like, you know, get looking bad. Like, oh, well, you can't find it. You get this prestigious law degree and then you can't find a job. So from that, those guests talking led to guest lecturing, where it was like, can you come in here and do a one day thing? Can you do a two week thing here? Can you, you know, and, and just parlayed into teaching. And every time I would speak, whether it was substantive or just sharing or whatever, I would get so many messages from people saying like, I really resonated with you. You're so easy to follow. Like, I love your style. I love how relatable you are because how I talk here is how I talk 
at dinner with my girlfriends. Like I just, I'm the same person. And so when I'm teaching you, you're like, oh, I can follow. Look, this is like not so bad. It's not some like boring buttoned up CLE, you know? And you know what? One, I was already in the trenches running a really, you know, increasingly successful practice and, you know, doing the grind with that. And then I started, then the messages started coming of like, how did you, how did you get here? Like, you know, what did you do? And really, how did you learn trademarks? Cause, and it, it resonated with me because it's like, I want, I would love to do trademarks, but like, I don't know how to find a job in it. And everyone wants experience. And I don't even know the first thing about how to like law school only teaches you the theory. And, and I was like, huh. And so literally somebody, I mean, multiple somebodies gave me the ideas. They were like, if you ever teach a course or like a seminar or something like more than what I saw you guests speak at, would you let me know? And I'm like, sure, I'll hold on to your email address. And then one day at 2 a.m. in September 2017, I was I had I was drinking a glass of wine because I'm a night person. I'm like, you know, sidebar is I just like want to say for everybody who might be struggling internally with this, like not being a morning person thing, like you're not a failure and you're not lazy if you don't wake up at 5 a.m. I don't. I do not. No one will answer your emails at 2 a.m. if you're, it's from the night before, just as much as no one will answer them if it's 2 a.m. from the morning of. Also, life hack, schedule them for 8 a.m. so no one knows where you are and what you're doing. <laughs> it just looks like ah, you're alive. Yeah, you life go. hack. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a famously a night person. I do my best thinking at night. Barack Obama was too. So, you know, we're in good company. But, um, well, I guess it depends on how you <laughs> if we're going on. 50% um, of the country it. thinks you're in good company. 50% of the country hates you for saying Yeah, that. I'm like, okay. I'll, Welcome you know, to America. But, but, you know, being a morning person is not, again, I'm very passionate about the alternate path, the plan B, right? Like, I, God, I'm just hitting all kinds of political <laughs> shit. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm very passionate about the other way it can look. So you don't have to be, you know, a straight A student. You don't have to be a morning person. You don't, you know, there's other ways, because that's the majority, right? A lot of us are different and no one wants to admit it on the inside. So it was 2 a.m. I, I had a glass of wine. I was in my apartment and I was like, I keep, it was just like one more message that day. I was like, you know what, let me try to, so I like chopped together like a rough syllabus and I was like, I could teach this in two weeks. Like, I think it's a two, two weeks seems like a good enough time, like two sessions for, you know, two hours a piece. And then we'll do it again the next week. I was like, I'll call it two weeks to trademark. And I just like kind of sketched out the modules, what it would look like. And I posted, I, then I had to do some research on like, okay, well, how do you accept payment? <laughs> like, what, how do I even do that? And so I figured out a link, whatever. And it was just, God, the most embarrassing now, like graphics, layout, whatever. But it just goes to show, again, it doesn't matter. So I posted the link on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on a couple of groups I was in. And mostly, um, I had just kept all the email addresses of the people that had ever asked me to do anything and again this is how diy and like at home this was i mean i know that you're fake you know we're all famously now efficiency driven and software driven i hand type i mean i copy and pasted each email like one by one because i didn't want to bcc it i didn't want it to look like a mass email yeah it was so manual so manual and but you know what again you got to start somewhere and i that was long before i knew that you could do all these amazing things with automation like who knew and tagging and segmenting and whatever but anyway did you have did you save where you're like was is the email like hey seven years ago you saw me speak and blah 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 and you <laughs> said if i launched a course well here it is like was it that specific pretty much i mean yeah it was like you know oh, i that's kept great it, literally yeah and they were like absolutely i was like here's the link and I think at the time, one of my students could probably correct me because a lot of them got in at that really amazing early rate. I want to say it was somewhere around like seven ninety seven or nine ninety seven, like either seven eight hundred dollars or like a thousand for like the two week class. How'd you come up with at that first, on day one? Sorry. How'd you come up with that price on day one? So okay, so I was gonna do like three hundred for the two weeks, but one of my brothers, who you know, our family discussions are not like. Oh, what movies are you watching? Whatever. It's like, hey, what's going on in your business? Like even last night at Mother's Day dinner, it was like, this is, it's like good and bad, but it's like, you can never rest on your laurels because it's like, well, what are you doing next? What's next, Sonia? Like, what, what about you? Oh my God, what businesses are we buying? Like, what investments are we making? And I'm like, God, can I just eat my red lobster biscuits in peace and quiet? <laughs> you know, but it drives you to, you know, your company is a component of what you become. And so I do feel like that influence has been good on me. So my middle brother um, and I are very close and that's, you know, one of the things that I 
got from him was this guidance along the way. He's the one that taught me how to build the firm, what to do, so on. And so when I had this idea, I was like, what do you think? Like 300 for like the two weeks? He's like, you're an attorney. That's embarrassing. No. He's like, I, he's like, I say a thousand minimum. And I was like, 797. He's like, oh my God, fine. So we, we, we compromised at 797. I was bewildered. I was like, oh my God, I'm posting this publicly. Everyone's going to think that I'm trying to make a buck, whatever. And meanwhile, by, it's not like I needed the money because my law firm was like skyrocketing. So I was doing really, really like multi six, multiple, multiple six, Like I was killing it. But you know, the passion was always there it was always a sensitive sore spot about these people who were, you know, and I, I mean, I wasn't that far. It wasn't that long ago that I felt that way. Well, like so anyway, 797 do one, like if this teaches you to do one trademark, you're making the money back. Yeah. Like bare, not even, I mean, that's like one stage of like, that's like a little more than one stage of a trademark. So not even. Yeah. So anyway, I posted the link. I emailed all the handful of people that I ever asked, whatever. And I got, I want to say like, 32 registrants in the first iteration so you That's do like i made that in 48 hours yeah yeah i was like no way my brothers were like oh my god she is onto something we are so proud and i'm like no no no. this is just a fluke this is just the people that asked so like after this that's it right like i just did the thing a little bit well, of, after this no twenty five thousand dollars. that's like <laughs> even there's so i guarantee there's so many people listening to this that are like Man, twenty five thousand dollars for one course. I would do that right now, and nobody. Yeah, else like would take if it. that fine. was it, I'd be happy. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, and I remember calling a couple of like trademark attorney friends, and I'm like, I feel like what I just did is like not real. And they're like, you did what just now? And I'm like, and anyway, I, I mean, I was like, oh shit, now I'm on the hook because I have this course. I sold it. Okay, so I put my heart in. I put all the slides together. I mean, I spent hours putting this together. And I was like, I want this to be an amazing experience. And, you know, when uh, people would sign on to this, it wasn't Zoom at that time. It was, um, I forget the software I was using, but it, it's also DIY and embarrassing. But like, like I said, I had no automation software, no nothing. So I was manually emailing people like, hey, we're starting. Here's the link. I was just like, it was horrendous. Uh, but, you know, it's the, it's the true story. And, you know, like, I've always been big on client delight, wow factor, doing things a little differently with a little sparkle, which is what helps the law practice. And so when everybody signed on, I'm like, check your email. I just sent you a Starbucks gift card. And they're like, I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, yeah. So, you know, when you come to our first class, like you can have a coffee on me and like get ready to like really pump up. And people were like, when does that ever happen ever? Like who sends you coffee, you know, to start a course? Like when, you know, so again, I was just like excited about it. And I wanted it to be a cool experience. I wanted it to be something different. And I, I feel like I knocked it out of the park. Like I put so much heart and soul into that two weeks. And even from this first session, people were like, wow, I am like, this is amazing. Oh my God. And it was the beginning of a whole, I mean, like I said, it was just the beginning of what I had no idea. And the reviews were incredible. The testimonials were incredible those people told other people i used their testimonials on my website with permission which grew more and, went, and with that money i did not go out and buy a g-wagon um even though it was tempting so i will say if not, not that you asked but one component i think of my success is that i have not spent everything i've made and i joke so one of my favorite like rapper artist groups is outcast um i'm a big outcast fan and they say in one of their songs it's not what you make it's what you spend it's true and so like, even though it would have been tempting, because I grew up really poor, so it would have been really tempting to just go out and spend all that money and buy a Chanel bag and do this. But I, I knew better. And I was like, no, 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 like, you got to reel it in. And so I used that money, just the same way as I built my law firm, I was like, reinvest it. And I hired a consultant to help me understand automations and the email marketing and landing pages and graphics. And then, you know, I did it again the next month. And 20 something more people enrolled so i taught it again and then i did it again and i kept perfecting it i kept perfecting it and then i mean i could keep going but i feel like do you have quite, i don't want to i mean i could keep going but that's really like how it started i mean i i love stories i mean obviously this is a great one so okay i you said 2017 you started this yeah september 2017 is when i started teaching um i was seven years out of school at that point point. and when had you opened up your firm 15. 15. Okay. So you get two years. So you're taking this money, you're reinvesting it in the course. Are you 
how, is that information coming over to your law firm also? Like, are there things you're learning about the course side that you're using to market your firm, like cross cross pollinating? I don't cross know. skill set. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Sure. I mean, I think the 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 real the good move there was that I treated this like new project just like the law practice, like client delight, wow factor stuff. Like, how do you sparkle? How do you make this cool and different? Starbucks gift cards, thank you cards, like all. I mean, now we send we send custom branded um, cookies with two weeks of trademarks logo to like every, people who register with the premium. There's now, I mean, it's gone through so many changes, which we can talk about, but. Now there's like a base tier, there's a premium tier. And when people enroll in the premium tier, which has like access to me and coaching calls and all this kind of stuff, it's very hands-on. They get like a shipment of like custom cookies or whatever. And they're just like, whoa, like what? So applying factors of client delight, wowing, sparkling, looking different. Automations, efficiency, working smarter, not harder. Um, relationship building. So same thing, like I went, you know, I would sit down with some of the people that had taken the class and understood like what drew you to this how did you find me um why do you need it so then i started to understand like okay so my students are coming from one of two places my students meaning attorneys right they're coming from uh business attorneys who've been like dabbling in trademarks but like never really learned it and now it's time to admit that or they're like this came later but it was like Oh my God, I hate my current practice here. I am so sick of going to court, sick of family law, sick of this, sick of, and like trademarks, again, I can't take credit for this part. Trademarks is a, the most unicorn lifestyle practice area you will find. And I don't, I don't, I, I can't take credit for that, but I can spread the word. And so it's like flat fee. You can do it from anywhere. It's very light, like location independent. You don't need multiple bars to practice nationally. So once I figured all that out, I was like, oh, okay. So yeah, I did apply all the principles that made the law firm successful to this. But then, like you said, after you know learning and growing this one, it was like, oh, well, let me turn around. And I would learn things that went backwards too. So, but you're right. I mean, to your point initially, it's like very, two very different audiences, right? Like one is business owners for the trademarks and one is attorneys. So yeah, they're very different groups in terms of marketing. Um, so we can talk about if you have any questions about, I know that's what we started with, but yeah, I, I definitely would say there was cross skill sharing for sure. And um, I would also imagine you had some trademark clients that were like, Sonia, I need your help. Like, can you walk me through the first one? Like, I've got this client, like, can I co-counsel you in or something? Did that happen as well? It did. Um, I tried to stay away from that just because you know, I really want people to learn on their own, but, um, I did a lot of, and I still do like, especially my like, um, premium clients, they do get a lot of handholding. I do walk through stuff. They'll send me drafts and I'll look at it and stuff because you might have the right idea. You just want someone to like, you know, yep, you're, you're good. Like, you know, and so I do like, I try to provide that support as much as possible. Um, speaking of support somewhere along the way, I forgot to mention this, but somewhere along the way I wrote a book, but it was for trademark entrepreneur, like entrepreneurs with my uh, attorney friend, Dan. Uh, and so that was building the, you know, adding to building the law practice. But then I also started a Facebook community for existing and aspiring trademark lawyers. And so speaking of support, cause I was like, there's no way, this is not a one woman job. Like support is a community, right? And it, all the things, there's a very correlation between all the things Sonia never had as she was starting out and all the things Sonia created for the generations going forward. A Facebook group. Imagine if you could just pop on and say, hey, I have a quick question about this snaggle tooth trademark situation. How do I do blah, blah, blah. Or hey, as simple as, hey, where do I find this on the website? Whatever, right? Easy, medium, hard, whatever it is, like one community to have that. A course where you could learn, right? Mentorship, whatever the case may be. And so that community as of now is almost, I think at like 2,800 or 2,700 attorneys. Um, and that started around the same time as the course too. So like in 2017, yeah. So from the standpoint of, I mean, look, you're, you're marketing to, for the most part, different people. I'm sure that there are some lawyers that are smart enough to be business owners that would be smart enough to fall in both buckets. But like, can you walk me through some of like, what marketing are you doing to get in front of these different groups of people? Like how can some of our attorney listeners utilize that for them who are doing family law and marriage counseling, you know, what, or marketing and PI. I mean, I don't know, whatever sure. anybody else says. Yeah. Um, so 
I, yeah, they're two very different audiences. They seldom overlap. You know what I mean? Like my business owner clients are not really interested in a course to practice trademarks. Once in a blue moon, you get somebody who's like, oh, I came across your website to schedule a consultation, but I saw that you teach it. So can I just buy the course? I'm, I promise you it's not worth it. Like, I don't want your money. I do not want it because it's going to be a disaster. Um, so with the business owner clients for the law practice, excuse me, um, I'm very big on rinse and repeat look at what worked do it again double down triple down and so you know relationship building and referral building and wow factor like client delight is i've said it so many times today i say it all the time but that i i mean like i should my next business should really be like a custom cookie shop like for how much money i've poured into like flowers cookies stationery oh my god are you kidding me like it's wild um how much time and money i've spent so your marketing dollars are going to go somewhere but for me they've gone in unconventional places like i spend a stupid amount of money on gift cards baskets cookies books candles i mean it just depends on the situation so my go-to and i'll die on that hill is that the saying what in english you die on that hill is that the, uh, oh, yeah. the hill you're willing to, my, to die on or whatever? I say that's my whatever four year old all the time. This is the hill yeah. I'm willing to die on or not. This is the hill I'm willing to die on is that re relationship referral building, wow, just wow, sparkle, wow, sparkle all day, every day. And that's the best money you can spend because it's personalized, it matters, and it's like, you know, you care. Um, so that has served me very well. And that is what I've continued to do. So anybody that sends me, a referral or work like I have different, all my different relationships and you know they vary in terms of how much contact we have but like lots of thank you notes lots of that kind of stuff checking in emailing paying attention I mean you guys this goes a long way but like you know we're all you know I met you you know through a Facebook group right like we all know each other in a way from like our online communities so if you're scrolling and you see that like you know someone's having a bad day like they're like you know my dog is sick and we had to put him down and this is happening like if you just take five minutes out of your day, or really, I mean, if you, you know, a VA or, you know, send it to somebody, but like take five minutes out of your day, I know, um, just have the thought to say, you know what, let me just shoot them an email or a text if you have their number and just say, hey, like, don't just like it and put like a sad emoji and move on with your life. Like everyone's doing that, right? But if you really care about this person and they've sent you work or they're a fellow attorney, make that connection, like treat them like a human. And so um, you can spend five minutes and, send them a gift card and say, it sounds like you could use some caffeine, sending you coffee and a hug, you know, or whatever. Um, that stuff like that goes a long way. Like people you want to connect with on a level that makes you stand out, which is a common question I get. And I know you didn't ask it, but it's like, I've, you know, done so many talks and, and interviews and stuff. It's like, how do I set myself apart? Everybody in my neighborhood does PI. I feel like there's a hundred different attorneys that do the same thing. This is how, how many attorneys are doing that? Right? Like, I scroll and if I see that like someone passed away that's important to someone that I care about, flowers are, are, are booked. Like, like I said, we spend a lot of money on that stuff, but these are people I care about, you know? So and I think that's, so that's the key, the key word yeah. right there. Like you're showing yeah. genuine care. It really is genuine. It's not to get anything. And I think that a lot of people shy away from this kind of stuff. Cause they're like, it seems underhanded. It seems disingenuine, but it's like, why does it seem disingenuine, right? Like, I, I think it's more disingenuine to pay a service to send you leads. No, and that's no disrespect to SEO. Like, I, I just don't do that because I'm like, I don't know these people. And I, I, you know, my thoughts on like ad spend and stuff are different because I'm like, I can't, you know, see where the money is going, you know, but here I'm building relationships and I'm continuing them. And I feel like that, again, I tried it, it worked. So I did it again. I tried it, it worked. So it's like, to me, it's just, um, you know, it's just been my thing. So that's how I market to, or build, you know, with the law practice side. Now switching my, gears a little bit. Wait, hold on before Sorry? you switch the gears. Yeah. So my, my two cents would be the people sitting there thinking that's disingenuous are the people that are doing it for disingenuous reasons. The people that are doing it because they genuinely care and like sharing happiness. Don't look at other people doing it with that same, with that same lens. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, yeah, I think it's all about what your intentions are. And, you know, for all that I've built in terms of businesses and that I talk about what I do and I do promote myself, I very, I'm not shy about it at all. Like if someone asks in any group, I'll say it publicly, if someone asks in any group about like an easier area of law or, I mean, my like best days are when people are like, 
trademark sounds fun. Where do, where do you think I can learn that? And I'm like, you know, that's a great day for me. But if people are like, I'm struggling, I hate my current practice here, I will absolutely chime in and say, well, I mean, I love my area of law. I love my, I have a great life. And so if you want to learn, I mean, I have a lot of people, hundreds of attorneys have taken my course now. So like I'm legit now, you know? Uh, and so I say it, but for all of that and promotion I do, there is so much behind the scenes stuff I do for free, for nothing, favors, and just genuine stuff because the root of all of this is that may no one ever go through that path again where they wanted so badly to do this thing and couldn't find help to do it. Like that's, I care so much about that. So, that. Yeah. yeah. So where do you see, I don't want to say this going, that's not the right word, but like from the standpoint of like you're building those relationships in those groups, you know, with kind of that same genuine care underlying it, but I feel like you get, I, I feel like the, the pushback from lawyers would be, well, you're training all of your competitors. Like, yeah, can you address that, that yeah. part? Yeah, I do get that a lot. And a lot of my colleagues and friends in the legal community are like, it's great what you're doing, but also, you know, and my answer to that is I've always still do always have had an abundance men mentality. And I know, I know it kind of sounds wee wee and foo foo, but it's true, you know, and mindset goes a long way. Like you got to believe that it's in the cards for you before it will be in the cards for you, whatever it is, love, success, finances, a new car, whatever it may be, right? Like you got to believe that you deserve it. And there's more than enough to go, work to go around. There always has been, and there always will be because what has also been so, an unex, unforeseen sort of like side, uh, I want to say effect because it makes it sound negative, but like, you know, um, a result, I suppose, is that there is more awareness to this field now this was like i call it the best kept secret because this was never presented as like a viable practice area and people tell me that all the time they're like i have never even a no clue i've heard of a trademark i've seen a little tm no clue that this is going to bust open as its own like you know like how cauliflower is like you know made its debut as like a repurpose like you know what i mean like trademarks have like really gotten the front stage for all of its trademarks you know the cauliflower of law yeah <laughs> love that and so i think that's brought more awareness which has really resulted in more um business too there's plenty to go around there's more than enough to go around and i mean i, I could pull the numbers i probably should have before our talk today i usually know them but like the the yearly filings before the uspto are somewhere like in the billions so like you don't even yeah like oh high God. millions billions it's I mean, granted, a, lot, a, a chunk of that is coming from China. Let's be real. Like, I don't want to paint like a false, you know, but a lot of that is in the U.S. And so, like, you don't need all those trademarks. You need a sliver of it. And that's plenty for you, you know, and, and there's plenty to go around. So that's one thing that I say about, like, creating so, and training my competitors. So every year in the United States, there's over a billion trademark filings. Million, high million or billion. That's crazy. Pretty high. Yeah. Like there's, yeah, so there's lot. multiple, so per, for every person in the United States, there are multiple trademark filings every year, like on, that's crazy. I've never heard it, put, heard it put that way, but I suppose you're right. But I mean, it's not all in the U.S. They're U.S. filings, but they could be from foreign corporations doing business in the U.S. Right. So that's, that's a lot true. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, still, but the market is huge. Yeah, the huge awesome. market, huge. And, and, and again, I mean. You, the pandemic worked in our favor because again, just as attorneys, we were like, man, I really got to find something better. Cause like what I was doing sucked. Same thing. The average American is like either left with too much time. Cause they're like, okay, I could do my job really quickly. Or they, you know, unfortunately may be forced to find something else or they've just, you know, finally realized that, Hey, you know, life is short. I want to do that thing. I've always been passionate about or whatever it is the market for trademarks has blown up because people are pursuing what they want to do now. Right. And so it's birthing. Anytime you have a catchy name, catchy, you got to name the thing, something, whatever you're doing, which births the potential for trademarks. So yeah. Um, during the pandemic was a huge market for, for new trademarks and new businesses. Absolutely. I mean, if you are a business transactional attorney, it's like you're leaving, you're flushing money down the drain by not doing trademarks. So that goes, if you're forming companies and doing entities and stuff like that, like, if you're like, oh yeah, you're forming a restaurant. Uh, don't you want to protect the restaurant name? Like, why are we not asking that question? But you don't know what you don't know. And so many attorneys are like, well, I never even thought to ask. And I'm like, yeah. well, now you don't ask. We call you that malpractice. Yeah. You can make a ton. I mean, 
a ton of money. Like the attorneys in my classes have done, I'm so proud of them. Like I get quotes, like you doubled my yearly revenue from last year. I made a hundred K more this year than I did. Like, you know, stuff like that is, it gives my work meaning. Like what a, what a treat. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, we're coming up on our last five minutes or so. What else do you want to make sure that we cover? I know we could go on. I mean, look, you and I could talk for days. I know. I love talking to you. Um, oh gosh. I try to think about the things that people struggle with. Um, I think imposter syndrome is something that we don't talk about enough because just because it finally got a name for all the stuff that we were all feeling, you know, but like we do the stupidest things as like attorney slash firm owners, like someone will email you to do a consult. Like, Oh, I'm interested in blank. I got your name from wherever. And we just like, won't answer the email. Not me. I won't, but like people do <laughs> I'm like, not, not I, I'll answer the email, but people are like, Oh, I'm afraid to reply. Like, I don't, I don't, I, I don't know why. Or like you had a consult with someone, like, okay, I'm ready to move forward. And they're like, I haven't answered yet. And I don't, I'm like, why? And there's something in your brain that's like, you don't know enough to call yourself a trademark and you've only done three, or you just took the course. You haven't even done one. Who are you to blah, blah, blah. What if they find out? Or what if you do it wrong? Or I mean, oh my God, the number of, and I know this because I feel all that stuff about other things that I'm pursuing. So I, I mean, imposter syndrome and no one's immune from it. Right. Um, but I think that that's a very real thing to focus on. And when you catch yourself not doing the thing, when it's like, so, you know, it's like so straightforward to reply to the email and like, give them a payment link. Like, are you serious? <laughs> we get in our own way so much all the time. We really when, do get in our own way. And the crazy part is like the beauty of being confident, comfortable, I, I don't know, the, the belief in yourself from that standpoint. It's crazy because then you can admit to clients that you don't know a certain part of it in a way that's really endearing. You know, it's one thing to be like, I've never done a trademark before. It's another thing to say like, okay, this one's really interesting because you're filing in this class and, you know, we've done a bunch of these in this class, but this one's like, you know, a little bit different from here. What I, I don't know, but in a way that makes you seem like a real honest, normal human being to the client. It, it does, um, it does do that. I mean, I think people respect you more when you're honest and transparent, which I always have been, I mean, even just now. So, you know, I just came back from the annual, um, trademark lawyers convention, if you want to say in DC and, you know, it's a huge networking opportunity to see old friends, make new ones, connections, all kinds of things. And I came across a woman who, um, uh, was, re is really well or high up in a naming agency, right? Which free game naming agencies are like amazing trademark referrals if you're listening um because they do naming work right i mean and you've got to protect the thing that you're naming <laughs> for clients so and she's like i love your energy i like you present so like i i want to like do business with you and she's like but a good chunk of our naming is for pharmaceuticals which comes with its own bag of tricks right like certain things like cannabis pharmaceuticals you know that kind of stuff um is crypto like is trickier with you know it's not just like a straightforward trademark filing because they're newer fields right um and they're always changing and she's like do you have any experience with pharma like because that's a huge area of what we do and i was like honestly uh, uh i don't and as much as i would love to have a relationship with you and do business with you and like you know i mean pharma we all we all know the potential there on commas and zeros and i had to be honest and i was like but i'm happy to connect you with i know some of my colleagues in my trademark group definitely can and I'm happy to make you a connection. Like I can't unfortunately take this. And she's like, I really respect that. And I'm like, it is what it is. Cause you know, so I think like there's a balance, which is like that Venn diagram between like being ballsy and confident to like push yourself out of growth, you know, in, into a growth zone, like do the things you're uncomfortable with, but not so much where you're like really out of your element. And you have no, you know, it's a balance. It's, it, and it's, it's an art, not a science, you know, it's totally. an art, not a science. Yeah. All right. So with that, I want to make sure that we cover everybody's time. Um, so let's start our wrap up process. If you've enjoyed this episode, which you had to, we had a phenomenal guest, uh, join us next week. Next week, we'll have Chris Guyman on. Chris is an attorney out of, I believe it's Utah, also does coaching for lawyers. He's going to join us on May 16th at 1.45 PM. So a little bit earlier than Sonia's episode, but next Monday, we're going to talk about time freedom, the steps to buying more time. So for those of you that love, uh, I guess, everything we talk about when it comes to being happy and having more time, 
this is a great episode. We'll dive into the specifics of opportunities to quote buy, uh, unquote, more time. So that being said, though, Sonia, I can't let you go without one that final nugget of wisdom, that best takeaway. Hey. If somebody's been listening for at this point fifty-five minutes and they remember nothing that you said, what would be the biggest, most important piece of advice you could leave them with to be the exhibit A of a successful attorney like yourself? Oh man, put on the spot. I'm normally I don't clam up very often in life. Um, take a vacation, take some time off. Most of you listening haven't had a day off in God knows how long, and it is not something to be proud of. That's my takeaway. It has nothing to do with what I just said, but no. I, it makes me so sad and I'm sick of reading it because it's like my heart hurts. I'm like, take a damn day off. Like, just do it. <laughs> it everything will be fine and it all will be there. That's, that's a perfect one. I don't know if you've heard, like yeah. I always <laughs> talk to people about like my favorite email. I, the emails where clients are like, we had a record month. We made the most money ever, whatever. Like those are great. But my favorite ones are exactly what you talked about. It's like, hey, my family and I are going to whatever vacation or here's pictures from the vacation. First one in years those are the emails that I'm always the happiest to get because we were able to convince them that they were okay to leave for a little bit and still make money and whatever it was. It will also, and you're a better you when you get back. That's the thing that people don't, you're a much better you. And I mean, I know you didn't ask for a follow-up, but like, I'd be remiss if I didn't have to squeeze this in is that if you don't make time for your health, your health will eventually force you. And it will be the most inopportune time. It will be in the middle of a trial and then you'll just collapse. You'll burn out. You won't be able to wake up. You won't be able to get out of bed because you're like dehydrated and exhausted and people, burnout's a real thing. And so if you don't make time for it, it will hit when it's le like least convenient and then it'll really ruin everything. So you might as well plan it. Totally. All right. So along those lines, um, coming up on Thursday, we have a happy hour in our Solutions for Lawyers by Lawyers Facebook group. So a good opportunity to take a little bit of that time, you know, uh, vent or brag to some of your fellow colleagues. We'll see you there um, on Thursday and hopefully we'll see you next week for Chris's episode. But please, 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 everybody join me in a wonderful, huge thank you to Sonia, who does probably, more, if not more for the trademark space, but certainly more to help other attorneys in the trademark space than anybody else. And thank you so much for thank everything you. that you're doing. It's, an, it's, a, it's a privilege, honestly, to get to do, I get to do this. I don't have to, I get to do it. So it's awesome. Thank you. I love it.